Hey, you guys, we have a few Giants bandwagoners, if not true fans in here. <laughs> <laughs> we saw the last night's game, which was awesome. But uh, throughout, our savior came out, Bumgarner. And throughout this whole postseason, he's been very successful and not only dominant, but it's also questionable of how, how he became this way. Now, what if I would have told you he's been so successful because he dropped acid before every game? He, <laughs> you'd probably assume that that's not fully correct. Well, uh, in Doc Ellis' case here, uh, in 1967 or if it was 76, I don't I think mm. I got those two slips around. He dropped acid before he pitched uh, a pitch to no hitter and. Uh, Throughout his experience, he he was leading up to that game. He was already under the influence of acid, and he was about 72 hours in. And he got to the game an hour before it was scheduled to start, and he pitched a no hitter. So today, I'm going to explain to you the effects of psychedelics and how they affect not only your mind but how it affects you in society. Uh, first, what are psychedelics? Psychedelics are a compound uh, referred to as hallucinogens, and uh, the, the uh, origin of the word, or the, the Greek word, or the Greek origin of the word is helos, uh, which uh, means a, a manifest in a clear state. So that's also the same as psychedelics, and how it's defined as creating auditory, visual hallucinations, unusual changes in mood and feeling. Uh, there, there are certain types of psychedelics, both organic and uh, synthetic. Uh, the more healthier choice would be <laughs> organic, obviously. But today I'm going to use LSD primarily as my example. Uh, the different types of psychedelics, it, there's a, there's a, a long range of, of lists that connect with all of them. But primarily, like I said, it's LSD, MDMA, which is also ecstasy. Uh, oh. PCP, uh, mescaline, which can be found in peyote, and psilocybin, which is found in magic mushrooms. Mm -hmm. So the high is pretty, from what my research showed me, was pretty consistent with the feeling of, I don't want to sound depressive, but a near-death experience close to uh, uh, being connected with the, the, the other realm. Uh, and pretty much making you feel uh, love everywhere, or you can feel complete terror, depending on the setting of where you're at. Primarily, the effects uh, happen focus. Uh, they happen where you are in your in your uh, your location, the people you're around. It affects everything. Uh, this little clip here is an excerpt from. Oh, Okay, well that's horrible. Uh, <laughs> there's a movie called Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, and Hunter S. Thompson is a famous journalist who is also uh, a, a very large advocate for psychedelics. And in this, in this uh, clip I was about to show you, he's at a bar in Las Vegas, and an hour or two before he got inside of the bar, he dropped acid. And pretty much as the, he's describing, uh, he went into a reptile zoo. So he was standing at the bar ordering a drink with his friend, and suddenly he turned around and he saw nothing but dinosaurs, lizards, <laughs> people that weren't human, and, and, and they were molding into the, the, the ground. The ground turned all bloody. He was, he was just, he, he, he's seeing these amazing things, and uh, it kind of just escalates from there. But primarily the high, it affects your whole body. You're, you're, you're pretty much numb. You feel, like I said, you're elevated. And uh, out of all the research I've done, a lot of accurate stuff has been, or a constant, is the tunnel vision you get. There's always a bright light that affects you. And when you're, when you're high off uh, these psychedelics, it, it affects primarily your frontal cortex of your brain, which is not there. And uh, it's located right here. It's pretty much the, the control center of your brain, which actively puts everything that we see out in the open, what, what seems real to us. But uh, when, we're, when we're high off psychedelics, these, uh, these sensories, these 
uh, neurotransmitters get kind of, uh, 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 they, they start going chaotic. And the frontal cortex, which connects everything for reality, is distorted and slows down. So then it looks for other parts of the brain to help. But the other parts of the brain are something that we don't usually use in our subconscious. So what then happens are we seeing things that we're not normally used to seeing. And, and, uh, and like I said, it depends on the variety of the setting and the location. Uh, Jane, oh. Uh, okay, the hollow mass study. Uh, um, psychologist um, Torsten Hassi, uh, an MD, at uh, Hanover Medical uh, School in Germany uh, conducted the hollow mass test. And it was a, it was a staged uh, test where it had um, sober people, uh, um, schizophrenics, and people high off uh, psychedelics. Uh, after this test, it showed the hollow mask in two separate pictures and where it, it, they looked completely the same. And he asked the, the participants to distinguish between the hollow and the, the mask facing you. The schizophrenics and the, uh, and the psychedelics uh, uh, patients were able to distinguish between the two just from looking at a picture. And the sober actually saw that both of them didn't change at all. They were both looking at the same mask. This to me was very interesting and in how our brain reacts to uh, uh, abstract thought and we are able to pick up something and, and look at it from all types of views. Some quick pros. Like I said, the, creative, the creativity enhancement, after you, you take it, there are a few uh, um, pre people, artists in particular, this, this painting or this picture was conducted by a, a, a famous artist, I, I believe his name was Robert Frum. And this was his, his first, first picture. And this one, I believe, was two hours in. And then this was about eight hours in after he, he dropped acid. And, it was the same model that he just used, and he changed the abstract of the, the picture just from being high on that. And again, I talked about the, the, the deeper connection with the universe. Uh, for example, for therapeutic values, uh, Dr. David, uh, or Dr. James Fadiman, PhD at the Institute of Transpersonal Psychology, he said that it filters, he, he quotes, the filters we normally use is lowered, which slows things down, which allows more sensory impression for more emotional impression and visual impression. After conducting these sets, uh, you were able to, or I was able to find that the therapeutic values were used primarily on PSD victims, and, and that's actually starting to pick up a little bit more. Uh, after after uh, being high off any psychedelics, I, I, they gave them the psilocybin prescription, and, uh, a lot of them had a, an 80% increase in, in happiness and, and less uh, reflections on their flashbacks and negativity. Uh, this is Steve Jobs. He said also, doing LSD was one or two of the three most important things I've ever done in my life. And uh, <laughs> knowing this, this is just interesting to me because now without all the, the, the technology advancements that we got, primarily based in Apple, he did you know open up a window of being a, a, a different thinker. And his mantra for Apple is to think different. The cons on the, on the other side, if you, do, if you do end up having a trip where you're in a location with people that you don't know, you're unfamiliar with, and it's, it's very uncomfortable, the intensity level is gonna increase and you could permanently be stuck in a bad trip. Also, it can bring up a lot of bad, bad flashbacks in your mind and, and, and create another <laughs> psychological breakdown. Uh, quick history, uh, this man here is Ken Kesey, this man here is Timothy Leary. Uh, Timothy Leary, it, actually both these men were in, uh, in CSI, <laughs> CIA tests conducted on acid, um, primarily to see the effects that it can have on uh, our, our, our government, not our government, but our military, and we were using it some sort of secret weapon. That was their idea. They were going to give us superpowers, but when they tested it on people, they were climbing trees and <laughs> trying to feed birds and, you know, loving life. And these two were exposed to those tests, and they actually went out and said, no, we shouldn't be using this negativity. We should be doing this every day. And uh, Timothy Leary quoted, "Turn." or this is actually something he lived by strongly after, turn on, tune in, and drop out. And this is during the time of the Vietnam War where 
the generation gap was actually fighting each other. So he said, we don't want to go to war. We don't want to fight. Let's just sit down, listen to Indian music, and zone out on the carpet rug. You know? And that's, that's pretty much how that went about. Uh, the, DAA, uh, the DEA counts for 32 million people who use psychedelics, 17% are American adults between ages 21 and 64. The possession of selling psychedelic drugs is a felony and can cause a jail time. 2% uh, two uh, 2 of college students have tried psychedelics. <laughs> uh, so that's, I, I don't know if that's crazy or not. But uh, primarily, I just wanted to say, uh, you guys, life is too short. <laughs> so if you ever get an opportunity that you want to make an interconnectedness with yourself and find out what you can do, <laughs> so you said the medical benefits um, of I have a lot more to say, but when you put up a few minutes, already. Yeah. Okay. Um, if the psychedelics are good for PTSD, mm. because you said they're eighty percent happier. Well, that kind of cut off. Okay, so the success rate actually was, it's, it's about 50% because not all of them can, like I said, once they took it, they either snapped them back into uh -huh. that place or, it, you know, so it was a 50-50 as far as success rate. The 88% was actually connected with another step as far as, uh, I believe his name was David Doblin. Mm -hmm. he, he, or no, Rick Doblin uh, of Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies. He uh, he actually conducted a, a PSD treatment, and um, uh, it was using MDMA or ecstasy. And he said that that had more of a benefit than the other psychedelics uh -huh. did. There was a more positive outlook on that. Okay, another question. This is um, really quick. Is Molly like you know Papa Molly and stuff? Is that <laughs> is that a psychedelic? Uh, it's. It depends on the dosage because okay. primarily I'm not, I, I don't know, I've never done it, but <laughs> it, 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 one, it, I've heard is just, you, you just need to maintain it's your to fluids. Be two. It's, yeah, it's two, that's when you start feeling. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, yeah, it's supposed to be like ecstasy. It's, like a, it's, but it's, like a, like, it's a more enhanced version of ecstasy. Yeah, it's, it's, it enhances your, your feelings and, and visuals, everything like that. Yeah, but I was in town. I don't believe you see hallucinations. A guy on Molly and. A guy. Disturbing. That's yeah. why I just I didn't know I didn't just like looking at him before you know like his group told us what was going on. Right. You just have no idea. You, you can't figure it out. I'm in That's my own sound. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Do all of the um, like psychedelics like have the same like um, yeah like the same effect? Well, that that's what was kind of broad as one with the list. Uh, PCPs, I would say, is the more extreme because uh, I'll just use an example of a fire chief that used to teach one of my fire classes told us that uh, he came to a scene where a man was high on uh, PCP and he literally ripped a street sign out of the concrete oh, and was fending off the firefighters and the cops and everyone. Oh, they literally saw him rip it out. So that, that it, 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 it damaged his muscles and everything. He, mm -hmm. he destroyed his whole body doing that. but. It gives you, uh, like, it, it turns you into a credible hulk, pretty much. That's just PCP. Oh and I think that's more of a severe. Wow. Okay, yeah. Uh, you primarily focus on LSD. Is it addictive? LSD? Uh, it uh, depends on the dosage. Uh, as the research I conducted, a lot of the people only did it a handful of times. And that's what they, they said after. It's something that you just do, and then afterward, you yeah. rebuild your behavioral status after oh, that. It's like a reset button. <laughs> Or you give yourself another perspective. Oh, did you see that? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know where I saw it, but it was like an artist who was like on different drugs and like did different things of himself. Charlie Sheen. I I don't know who it was, but I saw it. He was like. It was self portrait. Self, self -portrait. Yeah, I think it was like self portrait thing, and he was like on different drugs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. That's pretty. Cool. I will look that up though. Yeah, he was like on different drugs and like oh, the outcome came about? out. Yeah. Oh yeah, and then I evaluated you too. Um, you did really good, and mm -hmm. I like how you, your like citations were like doctors and stuff like that, because I'd be more like like it seemed more legit. You know, it's incredible. Incredible. It is a lot faster. It has a lot more information. Yeah, and you were worried about like not fitting. Yeah, but you did good, and then like um, 
maybe like because you were like more of like a pacing like you just like would step out and then step back in is if you're gonna like move then like all right lazy 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 try to get this time no likes oh oh likes okay he's making them cringe i don't do that um okay so you <laughs> move you step out and step in uh -huh. instead of that maybe try to oh stay God, still is, and either <laughs> stay still and move a little bit or like move around more than just stepping out and stepping in okay is that like good? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like you. When you pay attention, that's when those little things start creeping in. Okay, we have one more day. Shay. Yeah. Yay, Shay. Yay. Good job.